Hello, I'm Kat Spada, Communications Manager at WIF, and I'm so happy to welcome you to our conversation about the HBO Max original film, Unpregnant. This is a movie I loved so much, taking the format of a road trip comedy and focusing it on a complicated friendship between teenage girls, played by Haley Lou Richardson and Barbie Ferreira, who come together when Richardson's character is in need of an abortion for which she must travel out of state. I'm going to pass the mic along to our wonderful moderator, Liz Winstead. Liz is a comic and writer who co-created The Daily Show and founded Abortion Access Front, a women's health and reproductive rights nonprofit organization and production company. Liz will be joined today by Unpregnant's writer-director, Rachel Lee Goldenberg, producer Sarah Schechter, and executive producers, Lucy Katata and Jessica Switch. Thank you all again for joining us today. Make sure to follow us on social media to keep apprised of all of our great events and programs. Visit WIF.org if you're interested in joining. And membership is open to everyone interested in advancing equality in the screen industries. Now, off to Liz. I feel thrilled and honored to speak with all of you about this movie. And I'm, I'm in awe of your work and I'm in awe of people who have really decided to try to destigmatize abortion, try to replace it back into a landscape where it deserves to be. And also to just take it on with unabashed hilarity of a relationship of someone going through it. And so I guess I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll just, it's two teens, they're strange friends. They embark on an abortion road trip and they go from Columbia, Missouri to Albuquerque because the closest state for a minor to get an abortion without parental consent is New Mexico. So hijinks ensues, clearly. Um, this is the plot of Unpregnant. Now, I just wanna just kick it off with you, Rachel, and everybody jump in. Um, films that tell abortion stories using humor are finally tracking, right? You have Obvious Child, Plan B is sort of adjacent when it's about getting emergency contraception, um, and your film being explicitly, unambiguously and hilariously abortion forward in this film while having all the comedy that you want was really um, breathtakingly refreshing for me. I mean, it includes the comedic chase scene by a rando vehicle. I don't want to give it away. You know, normally you've seen a ice cream truck or maybe a dry cleaning truck, but this was so epic that I peed a little during that scene and it's worth the movie. So, <laughs> I'm so glad it could make you pee. Means I mean, honestly, it was, it was just great. Now, having said all of that, I have to ask as somebody who has used comedy to try to make social change, try to make hard issues lighter and more um, palatable, how hard was it to just get this movie made? I mean, I can start just because I, I, there, I yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I started this project and um, I read the book that this is based on, which is called Unpregnant. And um, and I flipped out for it. I loved it. I love the, I, I really believe in candy coating, like Advil. I believe in commercial material that has broad appeal that can hopefully change hearts and minds. And I think that's actually a really effective way to political change. Um, and so I read this book and I loved it. I loved that it was so accessible, that it was so fun. And um, I tried really hard to get a producer with my producing partner, Greg Berlanti, and um, we tried to get someone to buy it for us. And first I had to convince the authors of my passion for it. And, and once I did, I was able to go to the entire town, which is what it's called, but I went to every buyer in Hollywood and nobody would do it. And a lot of female executives that I had submitted it to were like, I really hope you get this made. And I was sort of like, okay, but why don't you buy it? That'll, that'll make it a lot easier for me to get this made if you, if you buy it. And, um, and I remember even one female executive uh, whispered to me, my boss won't do abortion. Like that's like not a topic. And this was a, this was a woman. Um, and I said, well, how nice for her that she lives in a world that doesn't have abortion. She's in a world that like, you know, that one 25% of, of women are not in. So that's a nice world that she gets to live in, but that's not the world that I live in. And that's not the world that young girls live in. Um, and so 
Finally, though, I was able, I had submitted it to a company that, that um, Lucy and Jessica work with, um, Eric Feig, who is an ally and a champion. And um, I submitted it to a company called me whispering, which was very loud. Eric doesn't whisper very quietly and said like, I'm leaving and starting my own company and I wanna buy it for you. Please take a chance on me. And what I didn't say to him was like, you're my last chance. Like, of course I will. But um, he, he saw it and, and he was the first person uh, besides Greg and I to, to, to love it in that way. Um, and he stepped in and we started developing the material, which was really exciting and working with, with Jessica and Lucy and Eric. And then um, once we were ready for a director, Rachel came in wearing an abortion necklace and presented this incredible vision for the movie that elevated every page and, and everything that, my hope is always to find partners that just elevate things beyond my wildest dreams. And from the moment Rachel walked in, I, I knew that that's, that she had to direct this film. So that's kind of the genesis of it. You know, um, I think it's important to lay out the difficulty getting this film made because even when we look at how abortions reported on from just a standpoint of not trying to make it creative. Uh, my organization, Abortion Access Front, did a study. And over the past two years, and we all know how much abortion has been assaulting state legislatures across the country, 0.3% of our media has covered it, right? And so to not even be able to tell the stories in the news, to have y'all say, not only this is this book fantastic, it's important that we bring it to the screen and tell the story so that it's in the zeitgeist because the story covers a lot of ground. And one thing that I was, I have not read the book. And so um, I love that also it's set in Missouri and goes to New Mexico because I think a lot of times when we hear the stories, people can disconnect themselves. Like I don't live in the South. And it's like, Missouri has one of the most horrifying, um, is one of those hostile states towards abortion. And I don't think people really understand that. Yeah, no, I think that there is a war on women's bodies and women's freedom. And I think that, you know, but it is, it's also gratifying that when I, we started off trying to make this movie, everyone said no. And now there's like, everyone's got an abortion movie. <laughs> like it's, that's great. I'm like, bring them. How many male midlife crisis movies are there? Like there can never be enough movies about abortion as far as I'm concerned. Well, and, and especially, I love the story, the obstacles from teens and low income teens. Um, you know, that's sort of the, a, a low income teen of color is your penultimate person who just absolutely has zero access, right? And so, um, you know, this person, uh, you know, the, the protagonist in the film is, if you're a teen, you have no agency. And, and it touches in the film around um, parental consent laws, but I don't know that most folks understand that in most states in America, if you're a teen, you have no agency over your body. And if your parents won't consent or you can't go to your parents, you have to actually stand before a judge and plead your case for your abortion. And a judge can say yes or no. And, um, and I love that that has to be the journey. And so like, Tell me a little bit about how you, and I think this is probably for you, Rachel, preserve the messiness and the uncertainty and the mistakes of being young without being patronizing or alienating. You know, it's just, it's a story of a teen buddy film to get an abortion, but it's also just, there's a lot of emotion there. Yeah, I mean, you know, certainly wanted to make sure that, that the, that Veronica and Bailey have agency in the film because the argument that we're making in the film is that they should have control over their own body. And so, you know, I believe that teenagers are capable of deciding if they want to carry a child to term or not. And that extends to believing that they're, you know, whole people who can be rational and have thoughts and have feelings and have opinions. And so, you know, it, it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't a struggle to sort of try not to look down on them because I I feel like I I don't and so much of the so much of the film comes from 
my own experience, not specifically with an abortion road trip, but more just, you know, the, the dynamic between the friendship, which was inherent and already in the book, but you know, the, some of the work that we did with the script was like making it feel true to experiences that I had with my friends and experiences, dynamics that I remember and events that I remember and sort of just trying to capture as much of that as possible. So, you know, it, it I sort of take teenagers very seriously and find that that's what's actually so fun about working on things that are about teenagers is how full their lives are and serious and complicated. And that sort of dynamic about not having, not getting to control your life in the way that you do a few years later, but still having all these big feelings and thoughts. Um, yeah, just, you know, sort of an easy, easy fit. Something that I love about the film that you captured so incredibly brilliantly is that um, and now we have statistics. I'm going to lay out a statistic because you 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 use the statistic the statistic beautifully. Um, the University of San Francisco did a study about three years ago um, to look at the after effects of abortion, and 90% of people who've had abortion said the number one emotion they felt was relief. You in your film presented so well that the choice to have an abortion is not the dilemma but it's the barriers with which people have to access abortion. And this is, I, I think I'm gonna go to you, Lucy and Jessica. So um, people are on various levels of their, um, of how they feel about abortion. Um, everybody that would make this film would have to be pro-choice on some level, right? I'm curious as producers, uh, how familiar were you all with just how bad the barriers were? And what did you learn just in the course of working and, and creating and making this, producing this film? That's such a great question. So thank you for asking it. You know, I think I was very aware of, of a lot of the barriers. I have family from all over the country, um, you know, who are not necessarily pro-choice, but I think this film has actually helped to change some minds. Um, part of the process of making this film was working very closely with Planned Parenthood and the statistic in the study you quoted about the emotion of relief was something that I did not know about. I didn't know that that was such an important feeling that so many women had felt um, immediately after after their abortions. And I thought that was incredibly meaningful. Um, and, and we all worked very, very hard to make sure that that was in the film. And I know Rachel specifically um, was extremely vigilant about making sure that our abortion, you know, our actual abortion on screen felt as um, instructive as possible. So I think that was, it was very important for us to go in with as many facts uh, to make it ex feel accessible to, to women who watch the film. Yeah, and the, that word relief, I mean, first of all, as someone who's had an abortion, it's a, a word that I would use and relate to, but actually that word along with the inspiration for that whole sequence where you see her go through every step of the process came from a tour of Los, uh, Los Angeles Planned Parenthood that that picture start set up where we got to, you know, I had a nurse because my, my abortion was a pill abortion. And so this, and Veronica had to have a surgical abortion because she could only go once. She couldn't come back for a follow-up the next day. And so we went to a Los Angeles Planned Parenthood and got walked through the process and, and you know, went to that not knowing exactly how we were going to show what what we were going to show and what I sort of went there for inspiration. And then in going through and realizing how little of it I knew and feeling like maybe it was purposeful that <laughs> that we're not aware of the process um, sort of felt like we have to show it. And 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 I want to see all of this. I want to see every step of this because I had no idea about any of this. And the and one of the things that the nurse said when I was trying to get a sense of what, you know, what what the the vibe is <laughs> when people get out and sort of, you know, I was partially asking like, how, are they in pain? What's the vibe? And she said, it's just, it's relief. I can't tell you how much the overwhelming thing is relief. And it was like, you know, I was <laughs> listening, getting my tour, like getting emotional and being like, oh, this, you know, this all needs to to be there yeah you know um part of what we do in our organization is we travel around the country with comics and musicians and we do big shows and we feature the local activists and the local providers in the town and it's a variety show and then the town gets to learn about that and i had a provider say to me and i thought i thought this was so interesting he said what you need to understand is oftentimes when somebody finds out they're pregnant 
No one is kind to them until they get to us. And that just hit me so hard. And your film, without saying that, what did we watch? We watched A Sisterhood you know, happen, but I can't tell my mom, I can't tell my friends. And, and, and you showed that in a way that I think is very real, that I don't even know if you understood that layer that you had in there, but the subtext, when I was watching it, I thought of that doctor that I had, that mm -hmm. had said that to me. And I was like, that is so incredible. And, and it's one of the things that I love is that you drop knowledge in this without sounding like it's expository. It's just dropped in. It's like, don't worry about it. One more people have one. It's like, oh my God, she just dropped that. You know, the truth bombs are really great. And I think, um, you know, we talked about how hard it was to get the movie made. I guess the other question is, how hard was it to cast? Were the, was it, did you have resistance from actors on the subject matter? Not even if they weren't necessarily um, abortion forward people, but maybe that they were afraid of what would happen if they were in an abortion film. I think it was a concern. I mean, I also think like something that's amazing to me about making the movie is during the course of making it, um, Jessica had twins. Like it, it's, it's, you know, that this is not like a anti, this is about people being able to have children when they want to have children. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also a really important distinction. Um, but I think there was some, I think people were a little bit nervous. I think they're a little scared people that, um, there are some folks that are um, anti-abortion that are just anti-abortion and that's their beliefs and they don't have abortions and that's, you know, that is what it is. And there's some people who feel very, um, very motivated to be very loud and, and demanding with their position. And I think that can be scary for, especially for young people to, or for any of us, you know, I think it's scary. Like some of the stuff that I've seen online and in response to this is, pretty brutal and and the you know and I think that for young actors who are at the beginning of their career like that's really it's really scary to to expose yourself to that especially if it wasn't necessarily your cause celeb and so I think that I'm really proud of all the actors and actresses that participated in this film because it's as far as I'm concerned it shouldn't be controversial at all like it's your body you do what you want with it but I think the reality is like my God, some of the comments that I've gotten on Twitter are terrifying and awful, you know, and 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 I and that's scary. So to put yourself, look, acting is you're so vulnerable. You're really putting yourself out there. People don't always understand that you're playing a character and it's not you. Um, and so I really applaud every actor in every role in this movie for being brave enough to want to just can tell the story in the face of people who are very, very hateful. Yeah. I'll, I'll just add that because I do think, yes, that was certainly a concern, and especially, you know, I, I felt um, protective of, of especially of Haley and Barbie and wanting to make sure that they were comfortable and, and that they, you know, that nobody crazy went after them or something. But also, you know, the subject matter also brought us a lot of actors, you know, I yeah. mean, most of our, you know, Giancarlo Esposito said that his daughters told him he had to do this movie um, because it was an issue that was important to them. I know Brecken Meyer had a specific connection. Mary McCormick had a specific connection to the, I mean, it was a lot of people coming to it. I know Barbie's passionate advocate. It was like a lot of people came also, you know, as, as many people as maybe were scared that we didn't spend so much time talking to, then people who were passionate came and, and, you know, and, and were, motivated to do you know our our movie for for that reason i think that well, when as far as the crew too i think the crew that we assembled was really incredible um and were you know very very supportive of the actors but also of the film yeah definitely everyone knew what movie we were making going into it and they were okay with that but also on the actor front like i know some of the actors whose like parents were maybe pro-life and and they still wanted to do it and their parents actually still wanted them to do it because it is an interesting conversation and uh, like it isn't a, a movie that's trying to be super preachy it's just this is one person's experience and we're just trying to normalize it and destigmatize it really and I think that's to me the crucial part abortion storytelling I mean I got pregnant the first time I ever had sex and I ended up at a fake clinic and it was a horrifying experience 
And so uh, whenever you see yourself uh, portrayed in all of your emotions and when it's you feel guilty for not feeling guilty, that's also a big giant thing, right? Why don't I feel bad about this? Because I've been told and it's been hammered into me that I'm supposed to. And it's like, fuck that shit. Stop listening to, I, I always say, if you're not feeding me, fucking me or paying me, your opinion is like at the bottom of any barrel that exists <laughs> in my life. So I feel like so those are good words to live by kind of always. Yeah. Um, but, and I think, you know, it's, it's so interesting, um, Jessica, that you said uh, everybody knew, I think it was you, Jessica, that said everybody knew what movie we were making. Um, and the reason that I find it interesting is um, a movie about Roe v. Wade came out uh, a few months ago um, that was hid from, it was an angle that was an, an anti-abortion film about Roe v. Wade, and it hid from its cast and crew the angle they were taking and it was very deceptive. And so um, again, our side is the side of light, you know, sunlight is the best disinfectant. And when you have nothing to hide, you don't hide it. And so that's what I feel is the gift that you give in this movie, the humor, um, what one goes through, because I think what I love the most, and I would love to hear, especially writing, uh, writing this, Rachel, is, um, when people say to me, how can you use humor to talk about this topic? What I always say is you're framing it from an anti-abortion person's standpoint. I don't have a moral issue with it. I don't believe it's murder. I don't believe your narrative. Therefore I can use humor to talk about it all I want. And so that's how I get there. How, did you, how do you get there when using humor in such a great profound way? I mean, for me, the the humor beside besides all the humor about their the girls odd couple and all the sort of jokes that are in a separate category, you know, the the humor really comes from how hard the journey is, and that's so we're we're trying to skewer that. Um, so that's what I I want to make fun of. I want to make fun of that all day to say that it's bullshit. So you know, so that's any any accusation that we're making fun of abortion just isn't the case because we're we're not we're making fun of how hard it is to get an abortion um which is a place that we're comfortable with and you know we never i mean with we we all talked about the script and did did work on the script and had thoughts and the you know the there was never a thought about it's not okay to make jokes about this or here's where we draw the line on what's funny because because we were all confident in where the humor was coming from right also i think like to add to that we talked a lot about um, the fact that this is a movie with the central character who does not doubt what the right choice is for herself. This is not a movie about a girl who's undecided about what she should do. This is a girl who knows what she needs to do and what she wants to do. Mm -hmm. And it's about the obstacles to her achieving it. And then similar, like on the other end of that conversational spectrum. The other thing we talked a lot about is like, we also don't minimize what the process is, you know, and we're very respectful of it. And, and um, there, you know, Rachel particularly really wanted to get that right. We all did, you know, but Rachel really made sure that that sequence, that's not comedic, that's real life, you know? And, and so we're very conscientious about a lot of the decisions that we made and, and like, but comedy can come from everything and everywhere. I mean, my, Rachel knows like one of my college stories about someone getting an abortion. It's like one of the funniest, most ridiculous stories you've ever heard in your life. Like it, life is funny and like things that are hard are also funny. And so um, it's a way of universalizing this process and this experience. And, and um, but that was really important to us. And for me, it's like, there has until now when there's like three movies about abortion, which is again, awesome is um, it wasn't, as far as I know, and in, in the movies that I saw, there was nothing, the last movie that I think really addressed in a not like after school special way or in a dramatic, terrible, this is awful way, um, a teenage abortion was Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Yes. And that was the early 1980s. And that was Amy Heckerling. And I studied that film in college and I, and, and I was so aware of what the female gaze meant to that. The construction of that story which is otherwise seems like this very kind of like dude 
teen sex comedy. And there were a lot of like Last American Virgin came out the same year. Like there was a lot of that. And, and, and then you look at Fast Times and you look at what Amy Heckerling did. And it's so different in every frame of it is different because I'm wearing a woman in film panel. So I make the point because it was Amy's gaze and it was Amy's point of view. And it was Amy ha coming from the experience of being the girls in that movie, you know? And then the choice even in post, like when she's getting the abortion, they play Jackson Brown song, Somebody's Baby. There was like a humanity to it. And, and I think that like, but it's also a real shame considering how many girls I knew went through this experience that I had to look back to the early eighties to see a representation for young girls. Yeah. And I mean, I hope they're all watching Fast Times. It's a very important movie. But, um, you know, I think that like that was a big part of Rachel's uh, perspective and why it's important and why we need women in film. Yeah, I agree. And I think um, and I think that, you know, pushing on with it, you know, as we are speaking, uh, there was a massive uh, rally in Washington, D.C. Uh, where men were marching to uh, because they need to have more of a say in abortion. They have uh, such a great say. They could not have unprotected sex with women. That's where their say is. You know what? You can just not. Yeah. This is the whole thing that is, and it's it was really wild. And I really loved the way that um, the film really placed uh, her boyfriend. You know, and, and how she was very clear on all of it and was not swayed by his argument and, and her resolve was really great there. And the way that you handled that was awesome. Um, I'm curious, did you talk to men at all about it? Like in, in creating that character, how did you craft who he was? Because he was perfect and she was perfect with him. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, first of all, Alex McNichol, who, who plays Kevin is, I mean, he he's he's the person for the role. He's so great. Um, well, first of all, my my past was done with my with my writing partner, who happens to be of the male gender. Uh, uh, so he, he would certainly bring some of his perspective. But, you know, the important thing to me, and I think this this was one of the changes from the book was to make to find the right balance of um, not making him sort of a clear villain but to make him, um, we, under, we understand how someone could be with him and all we want her to do is break up with him. <laughs> and like that sort of line of, you know, I'm sure many of us, uh, I'm guilty certainly have dated people that were like, oh God, that person really? <laughs> and so, you know, making sure that, that, that there's that, that he's, you know, he should be, he is supposed to be kind of gaslighty and abusive and, sort of manipulative, but he really doesn't mean to be, and he truly doesn't know he is. And so, and that's also still wrong. And it's still okay for Veronica to not want to be with him, even though he's not the worst person in the world. He's just not the most caring and not the most uh, there for her. And so, you know, having it feel, even though it's easy to say, oh, he's kind of an idiot, but like having it feel, having there, there be nuance there um, was important because, because we want to believe why Veronica's with him and we wanted to show sort of, you know, that there, you know, to me, it was very relatable to have like someone in high school who isn't going to be your forever person. And for him to sort of be like, I mean, this is it, right? We're forever people. And she's like, no, are you kidding? No, you know, but getting to that decision felt, felt very real to me. Well, and also I will say like, there were five men really deeply involved in getting this movie made. One of the authors of the book was a man, um, Bill, who wrote, with Rachel's man, we have three male producers, you know, and, and, and some of the men involved in this are gay. Like they could have easily been like, this is between y'all. Like <laughs> this has nothing to do with me, but they care. And they understand that like any violation of human rights and freedom is a violation for all of us, you know, and that we all suffer under those kind of constraints. And so I do think it's important to say like it is. Um, and it's also why this movie like needs to be seen by men. You know, and, and I think that's a really important part of it. I do think the nuance of what Rachel and Bill brought to the Kevin part, but also it's like Eric Feig and Greg and Mike, who are all producers on this, we're all like, also don't want like guys that seem like caricatures. We didn't want anyone that, except for the very Christian people to feel caricature. <laughs> and I think that's right because in order to 
actually change anything, changing hearts and minds and shifting the narrative to have everybody understand the human rights piece so that every, it's everybody's fight, I think is really important. So it's so cool to hear that it was people understood profoundly, you know, that men understood profoundly that this is a story that needs to get made. And, and, and I think the thing that I liked about that the boyfriend character so much too was um, we as a society have allowed him to feel entitled like that. You know, it, and that's why you don't hate him because we created him. He lives in our world. We worship him. He is a person who is entitled. And so it didn't come from a bullying place. It came from a, but what do you mean? I've been told my whole life and society has given me permission to have these feelings and to have this entitlement and, and to have her shut that down. I thought was really cool. Yeah, absolutely. So talk to me um, about what is different in this film than the, in, in the book? Like, what are some adaptations you made that were like, oh my gosh, we have to make this. Uh, I'm nervous about it. And I feel really excited about how it turned out. Well, I, I wanna first just give credit to Jenny and Ted who wrote the book and then wrote the first draft of the script because they, when I came in already, a lot of the hard work was done in terms of finding finding the way to make it, you know, to all the sort of normal things you need to do, shorten it and make it more shootable and find things that, that you know, that you can get away with in a book that you can't in a movie or vice versa. So they they already had put the, the, the script draft in like a great place and it's not that far off from what you, from what you saw. Um, the things that, that changed from when I came on, I mean, you know, the, the, the first thing that I did when I got hired was we had a marathon meeting with Greg Berlanti and he had he had a ton of thoughts but one specific thing was he talked he talked a lot about the abortion element and that was something that obviously that I had thought about and cared about but he sort of his passion that came from really everyone and then and then I had a similar meeting honestly with with Eric and Jessica um just after that was like just about being as bold as possible and sort of like this it felt like I feel like we all sort of felt like we were given this chance to do something and say something. And like, I'm very aware that it was a privilege to get to make this movie and that like we needed to get the abortion stuff right. And we needed to see how far we could push it. And we needed to, you know, and so there were certain things that were just like, you know, like I wanted to get the the one in four. We said, oh, there's the puppy. <laughs> we, we, in the movie, the how I would say it is one in four people who can get an abortion will, but in the movie that just felt like too much exposition. So we said one in four women um, or, you know, or showing the process, like really making sure that we were super, super thoughtful about every time that we talk about abortion, it it's what we want to say about it. And even, you know, sending Veronica on a journey of being just uncomfortable saying the word abortion. And then, so all of that was sort of crafted for the, for the film in a specific way. Um, and then, and then the other thing that that we did is I think partly to make it more cinematic was just um, really leaning into the different genre elements. So like the the I think that the chase was like initially a smaller element, and we really leaned into like let's have a wild adventure here, or or when they go into a certain uh, a certain scary house. I don't know if we're trying to not do spoilers, <laughs> or not. Uh, but you know that that like you know that 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 realizing, oh, this could be like a horror get out type sequence and really like expanding that. And so some of those sort of, you know, um, elements that become, can, can become more visual, uh, you know, we, we made sure to bring to the film, but things like the Kelly Clarkson was there from the start and, uh, and, you know, carried over in the dynamic between the girls and, you know, um, and the other thing I'll say is just making sure that we really, um, I think maybe that the, there are moments that we really worked on grounding in the film because when you're having, when you're reading it in a book, you can kind of get away with stuff because your mind's making it work. But with, you know, with when Haley Lou has to play this person who's going through something serious and genuine, even though it's comedic, you know, she she collaborated on moments of making sure that, you know, I, I, I can't just be jokey here. I really need to be real or find it grounded. So I think that there was some some grounding also throughout that we that we worked on. Awesome. Because I think it would seem that the hardest part of making a film that centers around somebody accessing abortion 
I think the misnomer for the general public who doesn't know is that abortions take five minutes and it's safer than a colonoscopy. A medication abortion is safer than taking aspirin. And so the actual having an abortion part is really um, not visually very interesting. And so how you laid it out I thought was really smart because it was, here's what happens when you go in, in, a, in a time that, you know, makes the most sense. And I think anybody who's had a surgical abortion um, could really relate to that journey. So I want to say kudos to Greg and to all of you for really saying, let's get the abortion part right, because um, all the other big fun stuff is... Um, is stuff that is detailed and great and amazing. So looking at where we're at the landscape now in abortion access, since you made this film, um, uh, you know, we are heading to the Supreme Court um, with a very real chance that Roe v. Wade will be overturned because the Supreme Court in an unprecedented move um, took up a case that it goes against the tenets and the constitutional right to abortion under Roe v. Wade. Um, and that feels really scary. Um, in the shadow of that, um, as I have been doing policy work um, and watching this film, Texas just passed a law, and this is so insane, but anyone, anywhere on the planet, if they get wind that a person who is pregnant is seeking an abortion in Texas. They can sue to stop that person from having an abortion. And I, and I bring this up not only because it's jaw dropping and that, and that extends to anybody who facilitates someone from having an abortion, right? So the hotel you stay at. So I'm watching this buddy film, right? And I'm looking at all the people that they encounter along the way. And had they had to go to Texas instead of New Mexico, every single person in that film mm. could have been prosecuted by someone in the state of Texas for helping someone try to access abortion in Texas. Um, and so we're like, you've made this film that's profound. This issue's not going away. Um, how did it change all of you? I do want to just say one thing and well, I think about how it changed me. Um, but the, you know, in terms of the what a dire situation we're in right now, um, which, you know, has it's only gotten worse in so many ways since the film came out and certainly since we were making it, because um, I sort of I feel like I made it with just a, a tad more hope than I than I have now. But I feel like generally, you know, what what our hope to do with the film was that I believe a lot of the legislative problems would go away if people were bigger advocates, if the pub, if the public was as big advocates as people generally feel privately. And so, you know, the, 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 uh, whatever it is, you know, the 70, whatever percent of, of, uh, Americans support Roe v. Wade. And, and I think that it's just the shame about talking about, it, which is, you know, like, like Sarah mentioned me coming in with my abortion necklace, <laughs> that was something that I had started wearing maybe a year earlier and wore most days. Um, uh, and, and then realized I should probably wear it to my abortion movie pitch. Uh, but, but was something I was wearing all the time because I, because I had sort of had that realization that we need to be changing culture and that that's really, that I, I can't control what the Supreme Court does, but that I, I can have a hand and we all can have a hand in sort of normalizing how we talk about it and how, and people saying the word abortion is really funny to watch the, the trend, even just in our own crew. You know, I remember the first meeting having our sort of transpo guys doing backflips to not need to say the word abortion. <laughs> and then I think we all sort of got a little more used to it by the end of the, uh, the end of the shoot. But so, you know, so I think that that's what's most exciting to me about this is that the, the Supreme Court and, and state legislatures feel really far away and really big, but the sort of changing hearts and minds um, process is like one person at a time, one movie at a time. Um, and and sorry, I did have time to think about my what I what I learned. I mean, I think I think that the thing that I learned through the process, I just 
I got heard so many people's stories. You know, I had already sort of know knew where I stood, but in the process of making the movie with with our cast and our crew, and then with people who reached out to me, you know, I, I've heard so many tragic stories and so many stories of people who couldn't access abortion, and they and they um, and they don't know that they would have gotten one, but were resentful not to have the choice, which that perspective just kind of broke my heart. And you know, we heard just so many stories that it it just sort of made me more passionate and more sort of respectful of the variety of opinions and then more sure that I know that everyone needs to be able to do exactly what they want with their body, you know? It was a really profound experience for me to make this film. And, um, you know, it was, um, it, it's so heartbreaking to me that people hate women so much that they feel the need to own their bodies. Um, and, to be able to, and, and you, and then you read about these like bills and you read about these heartbeat bills and like all this stuff. And it's so infuriating and it felt so good to be able to do something about it, you know? And, um, and seeing the movie, we had like a drive-in premiere cause it's during COVID and, uh, I've never felt so proud of something I've worked on because it had so much to say. And then I saw, um, Paxton Smith Smith's speech the Texas valedictorian who hijacked, and I just like, I was bawling, I'm, I'm getting teary at thinking about it now. And you're like, wow, maybe we, you know, we helped like 20 Paxtons feel confident in their opinion. And if nothing else, it was worth it for that. Beautifully said, Sarah. And one thing I want you all to know is we've talked a lot about, um, the process with which one goes through to have abortions. Um, I can tell you that providers are often left behind. They're left out of the conversation, they're shamed. And for y'all to make films like this and for all of us to advocate publicly um, to normalize the work they do is yeah. crucial. And and, and why I wanted to have this conversation about this film is because of the way that um, you didn't, I don't think people understand what happens when people provide abortions um, and people have caveats, right? I, I'm, I, you know, you should have abortion for rape and incest, but, but you know, otherwise. Um, it really puts this good abortion, bad abortion um, stigma on folks that's really unfortunate. And when people say I'm not for abortion, um, they demonize physicians and people that provide abortions in ways that I don't think um, gets talked about a lot. So know that you're doing quite a service by simply doing your art beautifully, by simply putting it out there and normalizing it for the people who actually provide the care. Because if we don't have the people that provide the care, it's not a right if not everybody can access it. And so um, it's been really just incredible. Um, any last thoughts anybody has? Um, we have to go. We, we did this so fast and it's already, it's already time. And I'm, I'm so appreciative of, of you. Thank you. Thank you so much for really great, thoughtful questions. And like your knowledge on the subject is just such a, a treat, <laughs> makes the conversation so much deeper. It's really awesome. Well, I'm thrilled to do it. And what? And for the work that you're doing on a daily yeah. basis, it's incredible. Well, you know, yeah. it's, it's the same. I do the same thing y'all do just in sort of a different medium, right? You know, I bring humor and, and what's fascinating listening to y'all talk about how to get the movie made in the nose, like, I literally worked at, I created The Daily Show. I worked at The Daily Show and I had people at the network telling me we can talk about anything, but we can't talk about abortion. You know, I I was at Air America Radio and, the, and big, rich, white guys who say that they're progressives were like, you know, are men going to relate? And so finally I just said, screw it. I'm going to start an organization that does this and, and exposes hypocrisy around this issue because we need it. And so thanks for taking the journey and doing it. And uh, I'm glad that I could talk to you about it. Just to add one final little sort of thought on what you just said, you know, when we all, when, when Eric and Greg and Mike and Lucy and Jessica and I started off trying to make this movie, no one wanted to make it. But by the time we were ready to make it, 
we had two studios that were willing to make it and they were both run by women. And, and I think it's about continuing to elevate women into decision maker roles in Hollywood. Yes. Uh, that's, that's makes an enormous difference. Like we're in a women in film panel and I feel like it's worth pointing that out, you know? And, um, and, and Sarah Aubrey who greenlit this movie at HBO Max's mom ran, ran Planned Parenthood in Texas talk about a tough job, you know, and, and um, but we all just felt like it was worth it. And so grateful to women in film, grateful to you, and but really to all the work women in film does, because movies like this happen because of organizations like women in film that have empowered all of us in ways that we're both conscious of and unconscious of. And also just watch the films. Like yeah. if you say you care and you say this matters, you have to not only watch it, but you have to tweet about it and tell people you watched it and get on your Instagram and tell people you watched it so that it, it becomes part of the zeitgeist in what's happening. I have to just say kudos, Sarah, to you because like my niece never heard of Hedwig until she saw the Hedwig episode on Riverdale. Yeah. And, but like, for me, that was like an amazing thing where I was like, I told you about Hedwig, but you didn't listen to me. But like all of a sudden these things happen and all of a sudden we're talking about things that <clears throat> we were able to put into the world, but people got to support it. So enough of that. You all are great. Carry on with your evenings. Thank you so much for making brilliant content for everybody. I, I so appreciate all of you. Thank you.